Last week I did the Navy SEALers physical fitness test, which I kind of decided I wanted to do maybe like four weeks ago. And I was like, you know what? Let me just do a practice run. You know, it doesn't hurt to do a little practice run. Did the swim, push-ups, pull-ups, sit-ups, run. Everything was fine, apart from those push-ups. Bit of backstory about me. I don't really train for push-ups. Most of my upper body training is gymnastics based, I do some handstand work, you know. I prefer doing a lot more hold work, it's a lot more isometric, so some tuck lever holds, you know, things like that. It's not really like, ugh. So when I tried to do the push-ups, this whole kind of chest tricep area just wasn't really working. The actual push-up itself just looked so off as well, and I think the first time I tried to do my two minute like max reps, I did I did 25. I needed to practice on my press ups and get my technique right and get my endurance up and my stamina. And so I thought I would document this journey, see how my body changed over those four weeks from me starting at 25 push ups in two minutes to actually being able to do 56 in two minutes. Because there were some areas that I wasn't going to train as much, there were some areas aka my press ups that I was going to train a lot more. So I kind of wanted to use this video to kind of show you how my body changed and some of the science behind muscle gain and muscle loss. And it's actually funny because you go back to my Instagram the last month, so there were comments on my post being like, your body's changed. What are you doing? Something's up. I don't trust you. Something's fishy. And it's basically because I was, you know, repping it out. 200, 300. 500 in a day. No, it's not that extreme. More silence. I swear they just see me filming and they're like, oh, oh, you're filming. So if you like this video, make sure to give me a big thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel with your little notifications on. So we're gonna start by looking at my physique and how my body changed by having just a different workout routine. So we're gonna go back to the start of 2020, where the year was my oyster, where I hadn't yet started training for the Navy SEALs. And then we'll go back to the present day after I managed to hit those 56 push-ups in two minutes. in my arms I felt a lot stronger in my upper body generally um, but yeah I feel like you can definitely tell that my arms look bigger when you look at them side on but also front on and that difference is literally just from me doing extra press ups I wasn't doing anything extra to my arms I was literally just doing tricep push ups but then a lot of people were also noticing on Instagram that my legs and my glutes have got smaller, like I'd lost a little bit of muscle. And now looking back at the footage, I agree, like I can see what people were saying when they thought that my legs and glutes had got a little bit smaller. So just to keep the whole kind of comparison as fair as possible, both of these physique updates were done when I was rested, so I didn't have a pump. But when I did have a pump... So obviously I've just finished my session and I, this is where I probably got the biggest arm pump. Um, oh, I haven't shaved my armpits for a little while. <laughs> They've really got a mind of their own. <laughs> so yeah, as you can tell, I've really been working on my arms. Right. Show me the guns. Look at that there. What? Some veinage. Look at the veinage. Some veinage action. Ooh. Get a good angle on that, Mario. Get up nice and close. Look at this. Shoulders for days. Where's the gym? Oh, the gym shit. Your arms are really short when you do that. <laughs> I had some guns, baby. 
So that's how my body's changed. Now I wanted to talk about why it changed. So actually what was the changing routine? And then we'll talk a little bit about the science of muscle atrophy and muscle gain at the end. So before deciding to do the Navy Seals fitness test, my workout routine for the last year or so has been, it's been irregular, but on average, average. I've had about one gymnastics day, which is skills based, so back flips, front flips, side flips, etc. And then three to four sessions at the gym a week. Um, and those include like compound sessions, functional workouts. Upper body wise is mainly just like gymnastics based, um, a lot of isometric work and hold work, so I'm not really doing that much like resistance training in my upper body and then lower body was now we've got a helicopter flying over they just love it and then for lower body i would stick to my compound functional exercises in the gym i show that regularly on my channel and on my instagram and i'd also sprinkle in some plyometric and explosive work to kind of support my sprinting but that was it i wouldn't really do that much like long distance or middle distance running. So that was kind of my training before I decided to focus more on push-ups for the Navy SEALs fitness test. Now when I realised that I was literally so far behind the goal that I needed to actually attain, I was like upper body focus. People were like, are you not doing any lower body stuff? I was like, lower body? I don't know her. I was skipping leg day. It was chest day every day, bro. Call me Nathan. Nathan or Sian? Basically, my workout routine went from what I just described to four press-up sessions a week. They're about 30 minutes to 45 minutes long. And then like once or twice a week, I would sprinkle in a lower body session or a full body session. So you can see it's actually pretty different. And I'm not saying it's the most rounded upper body workout, but for me, the focus was press-ups. So that's what I worked on the most. Just as a little bit of background of what I was doing in those four sessions, because I knew I needed to do 50 minimum press-ups, I would go for a range of about 100 to 200 press-ups per session, and my goal was to do those as quickly as possible. So as my endurance increased, I was basically able to reduce my rest time so that I could do that big number of press-ups in as little time as possible. And I think that's what helped me definitely in the last half of that two minute, like, press up sprint if you want to call it that. So that kind of explains why my body changed because my routine had changed so much but now I wanted to talk a little bit about the science so definitely in terms of what happened to my lower body in terms of muscle loss and then what happened to my upper body in terms of muscle gain and then we can actually understand what's happened because sometimes and I've mentioned this in loads of other videos in the past what we visually see doesn't represent the actual change in muscle mass. So obviously in this section I'm not going to be talking about me straight after a workout with a pump because that's just completely skewed by extreme amounts of blood flow. I want to talk about more mid to long term changes like the changes that we see comparing my physique before and after completing the Navy SEALs fitness test. So the first thing I want to talk about is my arms, you know, those sweet guns of mine because they're the ones that we'd expect to see quite a big change in it, and we can see quite a big change, but it's not all muscle gain. So the first reason is because when I'm training them loads, I'm causing a lot of tissue damage. And as a result of the tissue damage, we get inflammation, increased water retention, increased blood flow, and that all gives the appearance of having bigger arms, even though the actual tissue size hasn't really changed that much. On top of that, when I'm training my arms really frequently, they're gonna have glycogen storage. Now, glycogen is stored glucose that is stored in our muscles that can be used for energy. And because I'm training my arms so frequently, these arms are gonna need a little bit more energy. So they're gonna start storing glycogen, so there'll be an increased glycogen storage in my arm muscles. And that glycogen comes with water. So for every gram of glycogen, we get two to three grams of extra water that binds to glycogen. And so it gives the appearance of having bigger arms. Even though, like I said before, the actual gain in tissue mass isn't that great. So now I'm gonna go back to my normal training routine and we're gonna see that my arms quickly decrease in size because I'm not gonna be training that much, so I'm not gonna have that much inflammation or a big glycogen storage, so there won't be that much water retention either. And so what we're gonna be left with, probably in the next three to five days, is the true change in muscle mass. And it's gonna be very small. And it can be a bit misleading because it's easy to think that 
all of the size we've put on is due to muscle and it I, it doesn't really work that way it takes a really long time to build muscle so if you've been on like a bulk program or you're trying to build muscle actually building muscle tissue takes a really long time and what we tend to see very quickly is that inflammation and that water retention and it's important not to be misled by that visual change because that's not actually how much muscle you've put on so the sad truth is that these babies are going to go right down even in like the next three or five days so it was short-lived still gonna milk it though but the thing that is really interesting is my nuclei so this journey of me going from 25 press-ups to 56 in two minutes will have built some muscle and in that process has also increased the amount of nuclei in my muscles. So we have an increased amount of myonuclei. And although now I'm gonna go back to my regular training and probably lose that increased muscle, what doesn't go away is that increased myonuclei. And that's what we call muscle memory. And it's a great thing because regaining that muscle isn't gonna take me that long because I do have an increased amount of myonuclei. So what that means is that rebuilding process isn't gonna take me as long as that initial building process. Let's say in five months time when I'm like, oh, okay, now I wanna hit that 50 press ups in two minutes goal again, or any other goal that uses these same muscles, it's not gonna take me four weeks to achieve. It's gonna take me a much shorter amount of time because I have that muscle memory. And that's something that doesn't go away for studies show about 15 years which is a really good thing. And that's why going onto my legs and glutes, I'm not concerned about maybe a little bit of muscle atrophy because even if there was some muscle loss, regaining that muscle isn't gonna take me that long because I do have an increased amount of my nuclei from training those body parts for so long. Plus a lot of that reduction in size is due to those temporary factors that we talked about earlier, so inflammation and glycogen. The opposite has happened here. So because I haven't really been training my lower body, I've lost that inflammation, I don't have as much blood flow going through my muscles, and I don't have much glycogen storage, so I don't have much water retention. It all gives the appearance of my legs looking smaller, and there's nothing really to worry about. Nothing to worry about, just temporary changes. So that's kind of what happened to my body, how it changed, why it changed, a little bit of the science, what's happening under the skin, you know. But really the most important thing I wanted to talk about is what setting these kind of goals does for me. I'm not gonna lie, there are certain looks on my body that I prefer. I'm not gonna say that looks means absolutely nothing to me, but I never want that to come in the way of me doing something that is really fulfilling and empowering. And I think that's why I keep doing these challenges because achieving something, achieving a performance goal actually sticks with me because I feel more confident and I feel more empowered and I believe in myself and that never goes away and so that's why I show challenges like these and that's why I have loads more challenges in mind because they feel so good and I wanted to make this video because I think understanding the science behind muscle loss and muscle gain and increased myonuclei and muscle memory is important because it makes us realize that all of that progress that we'd achieved previously in one area doesn't just get lost because you've decided to go for another goal in another area. So whatever goal you've been eyeing up, you've been looking at, chatting about with your friends or family, just do it because it's going to feel so freaking good when you do. So yeah, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you liked it, make sure to give me a big thumbs up. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, the little notification bell as well, and I will see you very soon. Love ya. Bye. And another thing, because I've been revisiting the pull-ups, I actually managed to tense my lats, which I never used to be able to do because I didn't have the mind muscle connection. Hey. But, okay, well, they're small, okay, so don't laugh. Handsome. Ah! There, 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 there. Hey. Get, a good, get a good visual on those. I think I got a good angle. Oh, look at that lap. You see? They seem to have lost everything. <laughs>